must be a difficult thing to, cho to choose the picture that's going to represent you. People say, that's the guy I'm looking for. That must be difficult. James, let me ask you, what, what, what's your picture like for your acting uh, work and your, your kind of headshot? What's it like? Uh, it's pretty somber uh, and very moody. Yeah. Um, yeah. But mine's, mine's quite recently updated. Okay. So we're, well, we, where we've got your current one, this is James' current one here. Okay, you see, this is, that's a good look. That's a ridiculous chin, obviously. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but then we've got your old one here. There you go. Wow. <laughs> you see, which actually still looks great. You look great in both of them. And yet, neither of them scream um, children's parties. No. Because <laughs> you're riding high right now, but, you know, sometime soon, You'll be in a back garden trying to blow up one of them London balloons. <laughs> James, have you ever done a children's party? I, I did loads. I did about 300. Hold on, what? Yeah, yeah. Really? <laughs> really? He's been reading my... Yeah, I, I did it when I was at drama school, keep, my, keep myself uh, financially afloat. What, what sort of things did you do at uh, children's parties? So I wasn't a clown. I did uh, games. And what sort of games would you organise? Uh, well, lots of games with parachutes, that kind of thing. What, where you, they'd run under it? Or where uh, they'd actually jump out of planes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you, like, you know, if a cat and mouse, well, we'll play. I've brought one with me, we'll have a little game. Okay. Have you brought a parachute? No, I wish I had. Feel so underdressed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you come all prepared this evening, and you yeah. haven't even got diabetes, which was a lot of my questions were about. <laughs> I've just been told in my earpiece that James does has diabetes. James, you, have, you are diabetic? Uh, I, I am, yeah. Holy. <laughs> holy. Holy. <laughs> so... Well, then, James... Why am I being harassed to present this when you should have been there? Because until tonight, it's never been said that I'm diabetic. In fairness, James, you must really hate me. No, 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 no. I was quite entertained by it. I was a bit jealous that I didn't get asked myself, but yeah. Don't say that, James. You know what no, phone call you're going to get to tomorrow. Me, I mean the fact that uh, you wouldn't look visually like someone who's expected to be diabetic. No, there are, there are two People. types. OK, sorry, go on. Well, one's... <laughs> Hold it, let's get you out and we will grill you about your diabetes. <laughs> you know what, you know what? There's got to be a better intro than yeah, so here we, he is to discuss. <laughs> oh, no. We're not this morning. But this is a... <laughs> but I'm now excited by this topic. I've got the two types of diabetes on the, on the table right here in front of me. The one who has it and the one who's going to have it. I've got them both right here. You know what I'm saying? So this is like an experiment. <laughs> What are we doing? <laughs> Somebody presumed I was diabetic, I'm not. Okay. We've found a genuine diabetic who's a guest. Yes. That is a wonderful starting That's point right. for, for taking good. diabetes good. seriously. I'm, yes, I'm keeping that in mind. I'm just a fat yes. git. <laughs> well, we can get through this. Together. <laughs> Still to come, we'll be joined by James Norton, Brenda Bleffin and Craig David. Don't go away. James, how are you, sir? Well, here's Johnny. <laughs> James, well, James, I apologise for this, because this evening it's taken a weird turn now. Right. It's taken a strange, <laughs> unexpected turn. I hope we haven't outed you. Was it something you were keeping quiet about? Uh, I hadn't mentioned it before, but okay. yeah. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> well... I don't know where to begin now, really. I feel like we've opened up a whole new area of conversation. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if they ask, would you like to host the annual diabetes event? We could do it together. He yes. hasn't got it, he can't go. <laughs> but the whole thing there, before we get on to chatting about you, probably the children's party thing, because that just came out of nowhere, and you did used to do children's parties. Yeah, I So did. this is when you were a struggling actor, I guess, or be beginning to act professionally. Yeah, I did. I, I used to do them on, the, on a weekend, a Saturday and Sunday, and often, you know, you know stu a student, you go out on a Friday and Saturday, so uh, I, I apologised to all those parents out there, because I did. There, there, was, <laughs> there was one occasion when I... I had had a bit of a night out and hadn't had about two hours sleep, and they, they, the, the company gave me the number of my assistant and the number of the parents who I was doing the party for, and I rang the assistant. I said, listen, mate, I'm not sure if I can face this. I've just had a horrible night out, and my eyes were red, and I, you know, the idea of facing 50 little shits and stuff. Yeah. Went on for about a minute and a half, <laughs> and then the end of this phone call, the guy goes, sorry, mate, who do you think you're talking to? And I'm like, uh, uh, Chris, my assistant. He goes, no, I'm, I'm Mark, I'm, I'm the dad. Wow! <laughs> 
Yeah. Wow. It's pretty mad. Did you turn up and do that party? I gave him the best party ever. And he, t and he tipped me 20 quid at the end. Wow. That's <laughs> so you expect anything less. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, let's talk about War and Peace and what a success that has been. What a, what a great piece of drama that is. A difficult one for them to get right, I would have thought. Oh, and you are tremendous in it. Um, now, it has so much in it we could talk about, but the huge battle scenes have already caught my eye. And are they fun to shoot, or is it all just kind of concern and worry and, and health and safety going on when you're in, in the midst of those scenes? Uh, there's obviously a bit of health and safety, but there's a lot of stunts and explosions, but they're a lot of fun. I mean, I, I had an army of 300 Russian extras behind me wow. and a sabre, and I was walking forward towards the French, and I you know, pulled out and shouted, charge. And then I hear this wall of sound behind me from this guy, charge. It's like an eight-year-old's dream. The little yeah. boy in me goes, this is amazing. So, yeah, I mean, it was pretty special. One of the things that's a uh, byproduct of you being in, of course, is people have responded to you as an attractive young man. You're playing the male lead, and of course, you have to be good looking, but uh, some critics have dubbed it Thwar and Peace <laughs> because you're there. And, and that, that must be a weird thing. You must know that you're playing the dashing lead, but when it gets picked up in that way, I guess it's then something else and it's outside of your control. Uh, yeah, Thwar and Peace. You can't really pay attention to it, I don't think. I mean, I think uh, there was a lot of talk before, actually, we even did the show about him being, the, the character being the kind of Russian Darcy. And that was, I was, I was like, thanks, because the pressure's already there. Um, so I had this great aunt, it's called Grania, great aunt Grania. Uh, in, re in real life, we're in War and Peace. Yeah, this is real I mean, life. <laughs> this is real life. What I, mean, what, what I mean is... Hold on, in real life, you've got a great aunt called Grania. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's 91. Wow. And she sat opposite me at lunch recently, and she was like, um, she looked at me like in this kind of quizzical, puzzled way, and was like, I, I don't understand how you can look so good on telly, because you're, you're so bland in normal. <laughs> 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 like, oh, oh, so what I mean is, it's, it's all the, the big, yeah. the, breech, the breeches and the... Uh, but, men look good in breeches. Hey, and the big floppy hair, you know. Yeah, the hair is good. Uh, we have a clip. Now, this was a, a, a very memorable moment. This is uh, the scene where you waltzed. Um, yeah. Lily James is in it with a beautiful young uh, actor, Lily James. This is War and Peace, and of course it's on, uh, I think the fifth episode yeah. is on tomorrow night, 9pm uh, on BBC One. <laughs> That's a lovely, uh, what a, a beautiful, romantic scene. That's beautiful. And your dad appears in it as well, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. My dad is getting more press than I am. Yeah. He, he, he comes occasionally, there he is. Um, he comes occasionally, or uh, most jobs I do, he comes as an extra for a day because he's retired and it's a good way for him to see what I do. That's so sweet. So he can be there, you can still have that relationship with him and he can be at work with you. That's yeah, nice. yeah, it's cool. I mean, he's, um, he's getting a little bit cocky now. He's done about six jobs and the, he turned up to War and Peace. On the way over, he called me and was like, I think I fancy myself as a count, if you can sort it out. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'll be a, a Cossack. He's or, a peasant. He's yeah, a peasant, he's yeah. his place. And then, in, and then on Grantchester, he fell asleep in one of my sermons. Everyone was there in a very sombre scene, very attentive and, you know, really committed to it. And then the only person, like, a mouth open. So he like, genuinely fallen asleep? <laughs> genuinely. It wasn't even a performance. Uh, so Grantchester, you're doing another series of Grantchester? Yeah, we are. We've okay. we've actually we've just finished we finished filming it uh, uh, late last year. So yes, yeah, okay. Out so it's coming out nice to be. And if you haven't seen Grantchester, of course you play the kind of detective vicar. Yeah. Is that a fair way of describing? I guess it is. Yeah. Um, and w with the wonderful Robson Green as as the uh, sort of sidekick policeman. It's a great fun job. When you are a good-looking young man uh, in your line of work, when you take your shirt off, sometimes the newspapers yeah. they get excited about that. Sorry, I got confused. That wasn't for you, Johnny. No, sorry. I thought that was for me. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, sorry, Joe. Cool. And in Grantchester, there have been some scenes, I believe, haven't there? There, there, there is, yeah. There's often this discussion about the kind of the pole dark thing, because since yeah. um, that moment last year... With Aidan, with, with his Aiden, shirt off, yeah. cutting the... with yeah. the scythe. There's no scything. But... And I don't think I'm... In the first scene of the second series, Rob's and I are swimming. But it's not in a cynical way, I don't think. It is true. I think if, if you are going to get your kit off, it has to be within the story. If it becomes distracting, then it's you know, yeah. irresponsible. We have that clip. Really <laughs> pleased about that. <laughs> OK, so this is uh, Grantchester, and as I say, this comes back to, uh, pretty soon on ITV. Let's say for a minute I'm God. Why would we ever say that? I'm God, and you're Adam. How are we going to go about finding your Eve, Sydney? God didn't find Eve. He made her. <gasps> made her. And I 
never did fathom that. Why a rib? Why not something you wouldn't miss, like a, a bit of hair or a toe? And the toe, which Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman. Man cannot live by bread alone. Did you get my meaning, Sid? I never failed to get your meaning, Jordy. <gasps> There you go. He, there actually was, there, there, there was a flaw from some part of the audience where, when the uh, shirt came off then. Thank you, whoever mm. that one person was. <laughs> of course, Robson, who was fiercely sucking his stomach in for the whole of that sequence. <laughs> After Soldier Soldier, he, went, he had a huge pop success. He did. With there he is with Jerome. Uh, do, do you sing? Could, do you sing? Would you consider doing that? Are you musical anyway? We have talked about it. No, no, no. I mean, uh, I... I am um, a musical. We talked about the idea of having like a, an anthology of carols. But but you did you not learn the clarinet for a film? Is that right? I did learn. And, and so that must be a fun part of the job, I guess, learning an instrument for a part. No, well, so I did play the clarinet as a kid, oh. and um, then I did a, a film with Mike Lee. And, and, and when we were doing the early meetings, he said, "Do you play an instrument?" I said, "I play the clarinet," and he goes. Um, Brilliant. You could, it, was, it was set in 1805. So, so this goes, was Mr. Turner, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So he says, well, could you play a period clarinet? I said, okay, fine. So I spent the whole summer learning how to play this period clarinet, uh, trying not to make it squeak, with like professionals, remade the mouthpiece, hours and hours grafting away at this thing, and then I got to the scene, my one scene, and Mike goes, yeah, you're, you're just a bit too good. Could you make it squeak? <laughs> <laughs> so that was infuriating, but yeah. Well, well, you'll be pleased to know I have a clarinet here this evening. <laughs> yeah. Do you really? Yeah, we actually, yes, I do. I always have a clarinet under my desk. <laughs> we always do, I don't know why. Uh, do, can you still play it? Um, yeah. W would you play it? I'm thinking I mean, Johnny used, used to play the clarinet. Can you play it? What's the, uh, is it, the, not Cadbury's, what's the? See, oh, you mean Coronation Street? That one. There we go. It's not a bong. Yeah. You don't pass <laughs> it. <around. laughs> <laughs> He's gonna, he's gonna get. <laughs> Holy, what are you doing now? What's that know, noise? Stuck, is is that like a... That's my party trick. What is it? Oh, so you did, you... No, no, no. I saw. I saw an autofile make me call in there. He made that noise, not you. I could do a mouth trumpet. Well, can't we all? <laughs> You know, wait, we should. <laughs> we should do. Right, go on. You lead uh, B flat, and I'll. Uh, what well, what's so you're doing? The like, are you doing? Is that like Hawaiian guitar you're doing? Yeah. So Hawaiian guitar mm. and mouth trumpet. The bare necessities, ready? Okay. <laughs> Well, no, you don't do this. The black do both do the same tune. You've got to do the counter melody. All right. <laughs> we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll be joined by Brenda Blethen, Craig David, and hopefully we'll have some incredible music from our new supergroup, Don't Go Away. <laughs>